Hi there, I'm Eitan, and welcome back to the Wix Wiz. This is the final episode in our custom cart tutorial, and in this episode, I'll be showing some final touch-ups, such as adding some UX improvements that will show like a loader on the screen when you're making changes to the cart, and of course, how to actually navigate to the checkout once you click on the checkout button. So if you want to see how to do all that and more, let's get started. So now that we've finished adding the line items and the order summary to our custom car page, we're finally ready to program our checkout button. And the way we're going to be doing that is using our Velo APIs. And specifically within the current cart, we're going to be using the create checkout from current checkout API. And that is going to give us a checkout ID. And then we're going to need to head to the checkout APIs and specifically use this API, which is get checkout URL. And it's slightly worrying to me that it's in developer preview, but fingers crossed it will all go smoothly. And this should give us a URL to our specific checkout page. So all of this is going to need to be implemented in the back end. And let's start off with our create checkout from current cart. So essentially it's current cart dot create checkout from current cart. We have the option to pass in options, but they're optional. So we're not going to pass in the options. And that's a bit of a tongue twister. So let's head back into our editor. And I'm going to head over here to our backend code and specifically this cart file, which is where I've created all of our backend functions uh, related to the cart. And I'll add this up here on top. So let's call this function export async function. And I'm going to call this get checkout URL. And this is going to be a function that's going to do two things. So first, it's going to generate the checkout, and then it's going to generate the checkout URL and send it to the front end. So let's open up this function. And first thing I'm going to say is const checkout ID equals to await current cart dot and we're going to say create checkout, uh, create checkout from current cart. And then the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get the URL. So I'm going to say const checkout URL equals to. And here we're going to need to import a new library. So let me go over here and take out checkout and take a look here at get checkout URL. So we need to import checkout from Wix Ecom backend. Let me just copy that and head back to the editor. And then right up here on top, I'll add checkout in addition to current cart. And then over here inside my function, I can say await checkout dot get Wix checkout URL. And here we need to pass in an ID, which is going to be our checkout ID. Okay. And here I'm getting an error. And let's see, is not assignable to the parameter type of string. And I think that the issue here is that this checkout ID is going to come back as an object. So let me just double check that. We go to current cart. And let's see, uh, create checkout from current cart. Yeah, so it returns a promise. And I so I think that this is an object, essentially, so it doesn't yeah, so we're going to need to deconstruct that. So here, instead of having just checkout ID like this, I'm essentially going to deconstruct that object. And then here we should be good. And let me just check again what the format of this checkout URL response that we get back is. So I'm going to go here back to checkout and get checkout URL. And the response here seems to be similar. So let me Let's see, result equals, yeah, they don't really elaborate on what the result is. Um, so what I'll do is I'll send it as is to the front end. And then worst case, we can de deconstruct it on the front end. That would probably be the most simple since I don't know exactly what the response is going to look like. And that's not something I wanted to go to. So back to the editor, uh, I'm going to just return this return checkout URL. Uh, right over there. And now what I could do is I can essentially 
take this function and head back to my custom cart page. And I'm going to import it up here at the top level with all my imports from backend slash cart. And we're going to set up an event listener for this button. So let me go ahead and rename the button. So let's call this checkout button. And let me see here where I want to attach this event listener. Mm, let's see. So I don't have a function here for binding the event listener per se. So for now, what I'll do is I will add it up here inside of the on ready. And then worst case afterwards, I can move it to somewhere else if I want to. So let me go ahead and select the uh, checkout button. And it's probably highlighted in red because I just need to click out here and click back in here. Awesome. And we're going to have here an on click. And basically what we're going to do here on click is we're going to say const checkout URL equals to await. And we're going to need to make this asynchronous. So let's make this async and await get checkout URL. And then we can use Wix location. So let's import Wix location here. Import. Make sure you can see this import. Wix location front end, and then here back inside of our function, we are going to have Wix location front end dot two, and then we'll navigate to this checkout URL, which again, I'm not sure is going to come back as a, if it's going to come back as a string or an object. So let me just go ahead and add here a console log console dot log and check out URL and check out URL just so we can see what it comes back as if it's not what we expected. Um, so that should pretty much do what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and publish the site. And let's head over to the live site to see if this works. Okay, so here I am on the live site and moment of truth, I have my console open here just in case. Uh, and let me hit this checkout button right over here. Okay, so we seems like we had some kind of error in the back end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up our site logs. So right over here, and we can just go over here to site events. And I am going to have this open. And now if I go ahead and try to check out again, then hopefully we can see the error here. Oh, That is a bummer. <laughs> so, uh, I'll, I'll, so basically, uh, the site needs to be able to accept payments in order to generate the checkout URL. So this is not something we'll be able to check on a non premium uh, Wix website, which is a bit of a bummer. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to upgrade this site temporarily. Uh, if you don't know, you can get a 14 uh, a refund, a full refund if you cancel your plan within 14 days. So I'm going to create, I'm going to upgrade this to a premium plan uh, so that we can connect to payment and then uh, demonstrate what will happen here with this checkout URL. Okay, so I'm back and I've upgraded my site to premium and I've connected PayPal as a way to accept payments. Uh, and I tried to check out again, but I see that I still have uh, some kind of error here. And if I go into the logs, then I see that I have this error, which says that there is an invalid argument and I'm missing options dot channel type uh, inside of I'm guessing when I generated my uh, checkout. So let's take a look here at the documentation. And I will take a look here at current cart. And uh, da, 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 create checkout from current cart. And let's take a look at the options over here. And I see that there is an option called channel type, but it does say that it's optional, which usually should mean that it you don't have to put it in. Um, to be honest, I'll share some like personal experience. I have an app that I built using this API that's been having issues lately. I think specifically for this reason. Um, so these e commerce APIs are still kind of not fully baked. Um, and you should know that going into this whole uh, journey. 
Um, but let's try and add this channel type and see if that helps us um, solve the problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in this uh, channel type, which is Wix App Store. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab that. And I'm going to head back into the editor and go here into public and backend and head into our cart. And here inside of our create checkout from current cart, I'm going to add in the options and I'm going to add in channel type and specifically the Wix app store. And this does throw some kind of error and it says it's not assignable to type channel type, even though that is what it says here. It is what it says here in the documentation. Again, I don't want to, yeah, I'm a little scarred here, uh, but let's, let's give it a try. So I'm going to go ahead and hit publish and I'm going to head back to our custom cart page, give it a refresh and let's give it one more refresh just for good measure. And I'm going to try hitting checkout again. Okay. So now a uh, different error, different error is always a good go, always good news. Uh, and we can see here that we did get a checkout URL, uh, but as I wasn't sure, it's actually, um, it needs to be deconstructed as well. Um, so we could do that in the front end, the back end. Let me just do that in the back end real quick. So that means right over here, um, just like we deconstructed the checkout ID, we're going to want to deconstruct this checkout URL as well. Um, so pretty simple fix there for that one. And I'm going to go ahead and publish the site, hopefully for the last time, at least for this checkout button. And let me just give it one more refresh just for good measure. And I'm going to go and check out. And we got a checkout URL and boom, we're being navigated to the checkout page. And as you can see, uh, it has, you know, all of the items from the cart that I used for the checkout. And, you know, somebody could fill out all their details or pay with PayPal, etc. So that is how to set up the checkout URL. And I purposely kind of left in some of the struggles here because I'm pretty sure it'll be similar, if not the same struggles that you'll encounter while trying to set this specific part up slash work with the e-commerce APIs. Um, so I hope that you found that informative. And now that I've done that, I just want to add in one more small feature uh, to the cart, and that is kind of a loader that will show whenever we are changing and updating the cart so that the user kind of has an idea that something is changing. Okay, so right before we hop to the live site, I just wanted to point out a slight typo that I made. So here inside of the populate cart totals function, uh, so I had written originally dot show and it really should be dot hide. Um, I might have even said dot hide as I was writing that show. Uh, but basically, after we populate the car totals, we're going to want to obviously hide the loader and not show it. So that's one thing that I just fixed here. And now we can head over to the live site. And I'm just going to give the site a refresh so you can see how it behaves when we first load the page. So I'm going to give it a refresh and you can see that our uh, line items don't show up until they've actually populated with data. Uh, unfortunately, the order summary uh, doesn't work in the same way. It doesn't seem to be working at all at the moment. So let me just give it a refresh because that just seems like a bug. Yeah. So the order summary, um, you can decide what you want to do. You can either also hide it and show it, or you can maybe even just hide and show each of the specific totals. You can write the word loading instead. It's really up to you how you decide to delay the display until the data comes in. Um, I'm just trying to give you some principles for how to approach this kind of thing. Uh, and let's take a look now at the effect of the loader. So for example, if I was to add to the quantity here of um, a product, so I go ahead and click plus, then you can see here that our loader comes up until the totals change. So with that, I am going to wrap up this series of the custom cart. And what I really showed you how to do here is just the basics of building out the basic functionality of the cart. But I'm assuming that if you're customizing your cart, then you've customized it for a reason. And the reason is that now you can pretty much do anything that you want with this cart. So you can add in extra inputs anywhere you want and require the user to 
for example, provide a certain date or provide certain information before going and checking out with their cart. And you can really completely customize the user experience and fit it to your business and the data that you need to collect from your cart. Um, I hope you enjoyed this series. Uh, if you did, don't forget to give this episode and the rest of the series a thumbs up. And uh, if you have anything that you think that I missed uh, or anything else you'd like to see with regard to custom carts, please leave it in the comments below. I will consider adding kind of like an additional episode here if I see there's a, a lot of requests for a specific feature that I missed out. And if you want to see more videos about Velo, etc., then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, I will also be offering this template uh, for sale. Um, I will probably be fixing up a few small things in the code, but generally the code in the template should reflect the uh, tutorials that you've seen in this series. So if you want just a copy of all the code along with the design, uh, it won't come with the upgraded uh, premium plan that you saw me upgrade over here, of course, but if you want access to all of the uh, code and the design for learning purposes, then you uh, can find the link to purchase the template uh, in the description below or uh, from reach out to us uh, on our website. Um, so again, I hope you enjoyed this and see you next time.